Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a Copilot using Microsoft Copilot Studio. And I'm actually going to create like an HR Copilot that answers questions about HR policies. And I'm going to use three different techniques. First one is using just topics that I create where I create trigger phrases for topics and then decide what flow the user goes through. I'm going to ask them questions and give them some responses. The second technique is to use generative AI to do generative AI over an external website. So I'm going to put in an external website and I'm going to ask some HR questions that are present on the external site and see if it can answer those questions. The third technique I'll use is upload a PDF file into the Dataverse and have generative AI over that document to answer questions using natural text over content that's in the document that isn't on the website and that isn't covered by any of the topics that I created myself. So let's get into it. The first step in creating our Copilot is to visit copilotstudio.microsoft.com, which I've already done. And I have no Copilots yet in this tenant, so I'm going to go ahead and click New Copilot. And here I want to give it a name, so I'm going to call this my HR Copilot. The language will be English. And using Copilot Generative Answers, I can actually provide a website to use to pull knowledge from to provide answers that don't show up in any of the topics that I'm going to create manually. So in this case, I'm going to use this website. And what I'm specifically going to do is ask about job postings. So I'm going to ask what current positions are open and see if it comes up with the right answer based on having this grounding data in a website. Create the copilot by hitting the create button. So I'm going to pause the video and come back when it's uh, when it says it's ready. So I just got an email that my copilot has been created and is ready to be configured. So it says we've finished creating your copilot HR copilot you may now access. So if I go back to copilot page, I'm going to refresh that. And sure enough, I have a copilot. So let me click into that. And I have an advisory about some new features. I'm going to Take a look at these. Looks interesting. Great. They're adding more features. I love it. Okay. What I'm going to do first is just talk to this co-pilot and I'll say hi, see what it says back. It says, hello, how can I help you? And I'm going to ask it, uh, what is the, um, what is the holiday schedule? And see if it knows. it says, I'm sorry, I can't help you with that. Can you try rephrasing? Of course, it doesn't know because we haven't created those topics yet. So let's go ahead and do that. The first topic I'm going to create is something that does that, that answers the question about holiday schedules. So I can click into topics. I see these are the system topics. None of those cover holiday schedules. And the non-system topics, none of those really covered either. So I'm going to go ahead and add a topic. It's going to be a topic. I'm going to say create from description. And this is an interesting new feature in Copilot Studio where I can give the topic a name and um, a suggestion about what it does. And Copilot Studio will try to create a topic flow that meets what I want. So I'm going to call this a uh, holiday schedule. And this is going to be tell a user what the holiday schedule is for this year. It's not exactly the way I'm going to configure it in the end, but it's a good start. OK. So it says this topic was created with AI. It's fine. So it created some, some phrases for me. This is actually pretty cool. Usually I would have to edit these and type in phrases myself. I think these look pretty good. Holiday opening hours. I'm not really going to cover that, so I'll delete that one. Holidays off, special holiday schedule. Um, closures, let me get rid of that. Holiday hours, no. Holiday schedule, upcoming holidays. I'm going to add another one. I'm going to add uh, national holidays. So these are the phrases that will trigger this topic. I think that looks fine. And then here it says the message is the holiday schedule for this year is as follows. And it's made up some, some samples. So let's just, as a starter, let's save that and see if it works. And then we'll customize it. So what is the holiday schedule this year? Question. And now I get the answer that came out of this topic. So hey, that's a start.
Now let's make this even better. So what I actually want to do is cover two years and have something that is uh, a little more customized. So what I'm going to do is add a node. I'm going to make this to ask a question. And my question is going to be, for what year would you like the holiday schedule? Question. It's going to be multiple choices. So I'm just going to put in um, for this demo, I'm, I'm not going to drive it with data. I'm, I'm, I'm really just going to put in uh, 2023 and we'll put in 2024. Enter. Great. Okay, so this should then ask the user which year do they mean. It's going to sort a variable, and these are the two conditions. I'm only giving them two choices, so they're going to have to be one or the other. Um, and so I'm going to display for them the holiday calendar, and then what I'm going to do is I will just send them back to the start again. And this one down here I can delete. Great. So like a little flow chart. Now let's define what the user sees if they choose 2023. So we're going to send them a message, and rather than text message, I'm actually going to add an adaptive card so I can get some nice formatted output. So I'm going to paste in my adaptive card JSON here, and this you'll kind of see what this looks like, but essentially the adaptive card is the type, and the body has a title and a subtitle, and then a table of values. So. Let's go ahead and you can see what that's going to look like. It actually looks better in Teams, but within the editor, that's what, a, that's what we get. It looks pretty good. Now let's add the 2024 version. Again, add an adaptive card. Card content. Looks like that. So I've got 2023, 2024. So this will give a nice guided experience. So this isn't a generative AI topic. This topic is pretty much pre-programmed. So let's try it and see how it works. Let me save that. Now we'll say, what is the holiday schedule this year? And it asks me, which year do I want to ask about? I'll say 2023, and I get a nice formatted output. And you can see here it went to the top again. So let me ask the question, same question again. And this time I'll choose 2024. I get the 2024. I'm going to add one more topic. This time I'll go from blank. So the trigger phrases. Now, because I didn't use the generative authoring environment, I have to make them up myself. So this was going to be about vacation. So we, so it's going to say, what vacation do I have? Uh, let's go with, um, can I take time off? What PTO is available? And what I'm doing is trying to get kind of the way that people might ask these questions and give several examples. And that'll give the Copilot a better idea to match the question to the appropriate topic. So we'll go with that. That's fine for now. And then here again, we're going to ask a question. So I'm going to actually do this similar to the previous. And I'm going to say, how many years have you been an employee? And this again, multiple choice makes a lot of sense here because in this case, our Vacation policy or a time off policy um, has four different options. So let me go add what the option is. So each of these will send a different message because the message is different depending on the years. And then rather than an adaptive card, I'm just going to output text. So there are my four different outputs, depending on the number of years. Now let's go over here and try this. So I'll also recycle this. And I'll put in how much PTO do I get? And it says, how many of years have you been an employee? And during the preview, it's in this preview window, it's kind of scrolling, but let's say that we have 
6 to 15 years. And here we say 6 to 15 years, you'd say 3 weeks. Okay, that's good. That's great. Now go back to topics. And I have holiday schedule. I have PTO by year. So that looks good. So my third objective is to be able to ask about job postings. I didn't create a topic for that, but I did provide the external website, which has job postings. So let's see if we can get that. What job, job openings do we have now? And here we actually got a pretty good answer. So we have these job postings are available. So there's one, two, three, four, and here's the reference document. So if we click out there, those are the four. So that part works right out of the box. And in fact, we actually could ask just about anything else uh, that we might find out here. So we might say, um, tell me about food and beverage solutions. Let's see what we get if we do that. Tell me about food and beverage solutions. And here we get content from the website about food and beverage solutions. So that's kind of cool. So we had to do almost nothing for that. Now there is one requirement that I have for this copilot, and that is I want to be able to talk about other things that are in the employee handbook, not just those two topics that I created uh, manually. So here's a just a sample um, employee handbook that I downloaded from the internet to use for the solution. And let's say that we wanted to look up something specific from here. So how about personal leave? What may per, what if we wanted to ask, what can personal leave be used for? Let's try that. What can be used for? And it says, I'm sorry, I'm not sure how to help you with that. Can you try rephrasing? So it doesn't know anything about that. So let's see if we can add that in with another generative AI solution. So here we have the website. That's where it got the job posting information. But let's see if we, if I add in the employee handbook PDF file and let that get indexed, let's see if we can ask questions about it as well. And then we'll have some things that we pre-programmed, some things from the web, some things from a document, and let's see how that works. So it says file upload complete. Files have been successfully uploaded to Dataverse. They will be available for generative answers shortly. So I'm going to give that a few minutes to index, and then we can try it. OK, so I took a break for oh, less than five minutes, about two or three minutes. And I think that this thing now can tell us what is inside that employee manual. So I'm going to paste in what can personal leave be used for and see if we now get an answer. And now we get personal leave can be used for various purposes, including medical, et cetera. If I look at the original document to see if it's actually right, it looks pretty good. It created a number. You can see the generative AI kicking in because it created a numbered list for me and it picked out the details it thought that were the most important, but it didn't include everything in this section, just what it thought it was important. Now that we've tested the copilot in the copilot studio, let's go ahead and get that deployed out to teams. So there are two steps here. One is to publish it so that it's available to be sent to a channel, and then we'll send it to the team's channel. So to publish it, we just need to go to the publish tab, press the publish button, ask do we want to publish the latest content? Definitely publish. I had a quick message that said my publishing had completed at the top of the screen when that disappeared, but I can see here that it says my published copilot is good to go, published a few seconds ago. That's awesome. So now that it's published, I want to put it into my Teams environment. So I want to configure a channel. So I can see Teams is down here in the channels area. So if I go to channels, I choose Teams. And I want to turn this copilot on for Teams. So I'll do that. And I can see up here it says adding channel. I'm going to edit the details. And I don't really like the color, so let me change the color to something else. So I will go with kind of this, I don't know, how about a little light blue color. Then I'm going to change the icon. 
I'm going to choose this custom icon that I created. It's kind of an orange color. Uh, no, I don't like the background color as much, so let's change that to let's change that to a blue color. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, and then we're going to give it a short description. We're going to say our HR Copilot. And then we'll say this is use this copilot to ask about HR policies, procedures at our company. There we go. And allow your users to add the spot to a team, sure. More developer name. Mm, this is fine. Okay, this is fine. This is fine. This won't really matter, but we'll go ahead and save. Then we have a message that changes are saved. It might take a while for changes to be updated before when opening your bot in Teams. So I want to see how this looks. So I'm just going to go ahead and click this open bot button. And I want to use the web app. And then here's where I can add the copilot to my personal environment. I'll click add. And so here I am in Teams, so I can use this pretty much the same way. So let me ask the same kinds of questions. So I'll say, uh, what is the holiday schedule? I want to know what year do I want to know about? How about next year? At least as of now, it's next year. The schedule, very nicely formatted table, very clear. Great. So now I'm kind of back at the beginning and I'll, I'll say, um, how much PTO do I get? And this is finding that topic that I created with the flowchart. And it wants to know how many years of service do I have? Okay, let's say I have two to five years. Well, during the second and fifth year, Great, 12 days, that looks good. And then the third scenario is what open positions do we have right now? And this will search through our website to find that. Yep, those are the three that are correct. And if I wanna see the reference for that, I can click on the number. That takes me to that page, looks awesome. And then the last scenario was searching the employee manual. Let's find something that is absolutely only in the employee manual. How about how many days of bereavement leave do we get? Many days of leave do I get? And hopefully this won't be on the website and will only be in the document and that's where it will find it. And it did. So three days of bere paid bereavement in the event of death of a member of your immediate family. Let's see if that's actually correct. It is. Good. Okay, so that's our co-pilot that we created pretty quickly. And we used several different scenarios. So we used generative AI from a website, generative AI from a document. And we did topics which we controlled through a flowchart flow within the Copilot studio itself. So I hope you found that interesting, or at least you learned something. I'll see you next time.